whale sharks are the biggest fish in the ocean and they're also the biggest shark in the ocean. They grow up to around about 20 meters, but they're not predatory sharks, so they don't have big teeth and they don't feed on mammals and large fish. They're actually filter feeders. They migrate globally, which has been shown by their genetics, which is very, very similar all around the world. They're the biggest fish in the ocean, the biggest shark in the ocean, except we know probably the least about them of any shark species. My name is Alex Watts. I'm the Marine Megafauna Whale Shark Research Assistant. I came here really after my Masters in Conservation Biology. So when I finished my Masters, I was just looking around for a really good institution who had a good publication background and had some really good research themes. And I ended up here about a year and a half ago. You can find them anywhere the water temperature is between about 25 and 35 degrees. Australia, in the Philippines, in Asia, the very south of South Africa, and also over the Atlantic, over in California and Mexico. So they do occur in specific places, but all around that global band. Their aggregations tend to depend on seasonal events of productivity, and the whale sharks will actually take advantage of those events over a couple of month periods, so they end up being quite seasonal. Whereas here in Tofu, just due to the currents, the oceanographics, there tends to be a food source all year round where the cold water is brought to the surface by the currents. Very little is known about their reproductive biology. The one big example of a whale shark we've had that's been pregnant had about 300 pups inside, which is phenomenally more than any other shark species as far as we're aware. Now we have found that there has been a lot of threats to whale sharks in this coast, mainly the artisanal fishing that goes on here. There are a lot of nets and there are a lot of boats that are sort of traversing the oceans here. There's also bigger industrial fishes out in the ocean a little bit, so there are various threats to whale sharks in this area. And marine megafauna is really trying to get a baseline on the population here. And we've also been able to map sort of human activities along the coast, so we've been able to find through aerial surveys and, and questioning the fishermen, we've been able to find out how much fishing there is going on, if any whale sharks are being caught and how big the threat is to them. That's the only way really we can gather enough evidence to take to the government and say look whale sharks are important here. They create a huge revenue for the local industry and for the local communities and they really need some protection. They're very attractive for tourism as well so they're sort of a very eco-friendly way to, to support sort of local communities so we try and help them both from a local community standpoint and also from a governmental approach as well. The whale sharks were reclassified to an endangered species in the IUCN Red List and Simon Pearce, who is one of the founders of MMF, co-authored the assessment for the Red List. They've used quite a lot of evidence from different places to actually try and grasp exactly how the population has decreased over time. The Indo-Pacific area we think holds about 75% of the entire whale shark population in the world and we think that the Atlantic holds about 20%. Now when Simon uh, and his colleagues had a look at the numbers from those areas they found a more than 50% decrease in the last few years and that is what the IUCN Red List needs to describe the animal as endangered. The main future plans for MMF at the moment is concentrating on some of the special aggregations that have been discovered. We're trying to put tags on the pregnant female sharks to find out where they come from and where they go to maybe to breed or where to have their young. Without actually knowing where they are, it's very, very difficult to target conservation efforts. If we know that there are sites where they're breeding or we know there is corridors used by pregnant females, then we can actually start to put some protection in place. And the other thing we're really trying to look at at the moment is to mitigate any threats. So not only are we working on a local scale, but also internationally. Some places in Asia and China have direct fisheries. They're protected in the Philippines and they're protected in Taiwan, but as soon as they move into the China Sea, they're not protected anymore. So the other thing is we want to have a look at how much those sharks are moving in and out of those areas. We do try and encourage submission of any photos to whalesharkorg which is a global database. There's about 7,000 individual sharks in that database at the moment that are recognized around the world. And about 700 of those we actually see here in Mozambique. We can also from that as well get people involved in sponsorships and adoptions and that goes into the revenue behind the research. You know, a once in a lifetime experience with a new shark that's never been seen before. It's a really good way to get members of the public very, very interested and keep that interest going year after year.